Greetings from St Paul's Online. Evening prayer on Monday after this glorious day. Uh, let's come into God's presence. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's receive that peace. And for those who it's been a stressful day, O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. In the darkness of our sin, you shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to acknowledge your presence, that freed from the misery of sin and shame, we may grow into your likeness from glory to glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. This song of entreaty, Lord Jesus, think on me and purge away my sin. From earth-born passions set me free and make me pure within. Lord Jesus, think on me with many a care oppressed. Let me thy loving servant be and taste thy promised rest. Lord Jesus, think on me, nor let me go astray. Through darkness and perplexity point thou the heavenly way. Lord Jesus, think on me, that when the flood is past, I may the eternal brightness see and share thy joy at last. So let's pray that this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. A moment's quiet as we bring our thoughts to God. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Some verses from Psalm 25 with the refrain, Remember, Lord, your compassion and love. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you're the God of my salvation. For you have I hoped all the day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in doing right and teach his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love. Free us, God of mercy, from all that keeps us from you. Relieve the misery of the anxious and the ashamed and fill us with the hope of peace, which we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. So come, let us return to the Lord, for our God will richly pardon. As we think of God bringing good out of bad stuff and light into out of darkness, so let's give to him anything which is burdening us and ask for his light, his perspective, his creativity. A few verses from Jeremiah 17. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending it out, out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it's not anxious, and it doesn't cease to bear fruit. So, Father, amidst the stresses, we pray for fruit. It may be the fruit of patience, uh, which is formed generally through trouble. 
it may be other fruit, but Father, great, grant that we can be fruitful and grant that we can reach out and care for others and look to you to get the perspective. So help us to praise you for all your goodness amidst this as a way of restoring our souls. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. Christ suffered for you and for me, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he didn't revile in return. When he suffered, he didn't threaten, but he trusted himself to God, who judges justly. He was tempted like us in all ways, yet without sin. Sometimes it's helpful, isn't it, to stop ourselves having the last word. He knew when not to speak, as well as when to speak. Father, give us wisdom. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed, for we were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of our souls. Continuing in our series on Philippians, we're now in chapter 1 still, but verse 20. Paul has been reflecting in prison and people will, yesterday, um, on Friday, on Saturday it was, I'm losing the track of the time, uh, on Saturday he, he was reflecting on the fact that through him being sidelined in prison, other people were preaching, some for good motives and some for bad motives, and he was rejoicing in that, looking with fresh eyes on things and getting a perspective to praise God. He continues, verse 20, I eagerly expect and hope that I will no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage, so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I'm to go on living this in the body, this will mean fruitful labour for me. Yet what shall I choose? I don't know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it's more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain. And I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. What an amazing passage, isn't it? Where... It's all about what his life is Christ's. And so if Christ thinks it's the right time for him to go, well, then he's very happy to go and looking forward. And when the time does come much later on, he says, I'm, I'm ready now and look forward to receiving the crown of righteousness that Christ reserved for me. But he used this present time. He asked for courage so that he could face it in the right way. So he says, doesn't he, I pray that I won't be ashamed but will have sufficient courage, as always, that Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death. Because we think of Jesus, how he died was amazing. And that's what we remember even more than his amazing life. And in a way, his life was amazingly fruitful. Or think of all the people healed and blessed and all the teaching. But it is through his death. That he achieved the most. Stephen, an amazing man, a deacon, chosen to difficult situations to bring peace and uh, be a deacon there. By his death, probably Paul became a good step further forward on the way from the, his journey from being Saul to Paul. So God can achieve. And one of the things I'm praying is that we're not robbed of anything by the evil one. So there's a time. There's a time for us to die and there's a time for us to live. There's a time for us to shine through the troubles and there's a time when God lifts us up and makes our path straight. But it's that we will have courage to face. And God wants to support us in it so that we never go through things alone. Jesus went through the cross alone, but we will always have his rod and staff comforting us. So we're never alone. 
and we can face whatever knowing that God can work in it for good for us and for all those we love who are in Christ. So Paul is caught, as it were, from himself. He's not a masochist. He doesn't look forward to all the sufferings that he'll come forward to. And I think Ananias had probably told him what he would suffer. But it's for the church. What does the church need? And he felt that uh, he was still around. And he was right. He was still around. He was released. And in the end, he knew when he was to die. And God had sort of told him, this is your time. And he left, if you like, the church in a better state because of all the letters he'd posted. But I'm sure there were great losses when Paul wasn't there to help sort things out. But it was God's timing. And we can trust in God's timing. And the great thing is to, if you like, keep short accounts, isn't it? So where we've messed up or where we've had a bad reaction to a wound, let's ask God to his blood to cover it so that there's no angles for the evil one to twist us round. No toes living by sun going down on our anger. But that we can live well in his presence. And then at the right time, we can step into his presence, which is better by far. This beautiful day in our front garden, we've got these wonderful bulbs coming up. And I always love them as a sign of spring and new life. But it's nothing to what heaven will be. So we can so meditate on heaven and the wonders of it. It will be a place of great growth, won't it? We're, we may be in charge of cities and the building of the new Jerusalem is as wide and broad as high, which is a good challenge for architects. So there's going to be work, but it's going to be without the hassle, without the strain. There's no sorrow or sadness or sickness or death but time with God in his presence, perfect connections with each other, a new body and a new creation. So there's nothing to fear for there. And Paul exemplifies that. And so he's convinced he'll stay with them and he'll help them progress and joy in the faith. So we'll have joy in our faith. Even in the midst of these troubles, this letter resonates and is filled with joy so that Christ Jesus will abound in us and others. So let's pray. Father, as we see the joy, that can be a bit daunting to have Paul's example, where he copes so amazingly with his troubles. We often struggle and limp, but help us when we struggle and limp to turn to you and to receive your perspective and your peace and your provision. Thank you that you are all we need and what you choose to provide. And so for us where we're missing perhaps the hugs we would have received or the distractions perhaps that would have stopped us thinking, we turn to you and ask for your perspective and your stilling for us. We pray for our families. We pray this may be a time of restoration. We pray for all those where there's tensions for the wisdom of not answering back so that we don't put people down. Uh, we don't keep points scoring. We don't think the worst and we don't opt out. Father, give us grace to grow relationships in this time. And we pray for intergenerational relationships. We pray for the children at home learning and thank you for the Skype that can connect when physical contact isn't possible. Lord, we pray for our community. We pray for St Albans and all the councils as they labour to try and put in place uh, provisions. We pray for those who will need particular care and the councils getting the information for that. We pray for the military as they are getting involved in their logistics and their energy and their skill. We thank you for them. We pray for our government, for wisdom, for their decisions in this press time. And not just our government, we pray for the connections between governments of 
the right ideas to help each other. And we pray particularly for those countries where the resources are much more lacking than ours. But we pray too for the NHS and we thank God for the way it is working. We pray for the provision of equipment for them. We pray for superhuman downloads of your grace and energy for all those involved in caring for others. And we pray, Father, for all the ways that we can support them through prayer or practical ways. We pray too for the supermarkets and all those with the distribution of food. We pray for those who are worried by financial or other cares. And finally, we pray for all those who are grieving or worrying for sick relatives or for themselves. Father, grant us peace and we pray for miraculous recovery and we pray for the laborious healing too. But we thank you that neither life nor death can separate us from you. We ask these prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Just as ending, the, the verse of the hymn that came to me was that old hymn, and I'm afraid I'm old as a dinosaur and I go back, therefore, to old hymns I learnt uh, many years ago. But what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Saviour, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise, forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find a solace there. That hymn written out of deep experience of loss, by a man called Joseph Scriven, can nourish our hearts today. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all those around you evermore. Amen. Hope to contact you again with night prayer and there are various other things the church is uh, loading up so uh, do look on our website we're trying to reorganize that to make it easier too so the website of uh, www.stpauls-stalbans.org uh, uh, be great to see you there and thanks to all those who are doing so much to facilitate these things and to grant us creativity as to ways we can encourage and uh, strengthen each other in Christ. Every blessing. Joy to you. Bye-bye.